Hello, everyone. My name is Robert Pinajero, and I'm sorry I couldn't make it to Puerto Rico to be with you all at the conference, uh, but I still wanted to send in a video um, so I could discuss some of the ideas of my paper. Uh, my paper focuses specifically on race relations between Latinos and African Americans in hip hop culture and beyond. Uh, the title of my paper is Tenuous Solidarity, uh, Black and Brown in Hip Hop. So, I propose that Latinos and African Americans highlighted here through the lens of hip hop are in a constant state of tension and solidarity. Here I offer a new term which I feel may capture best this relationship, tenuous solidarity. The two groups interact in a physical, linguistic, and rhetorical borderland and coexist in what Lu Ming Mao might refer to as a state of together indifference. They meet clash and grapple with each other in a brutally beautiful manner that is indicative of many racially or otherwise divided people throughout the world. A telling quotation that points to this notion of tenuous solidarity comes from Latino rapper Down aka Kilo who states, you could be a Latino, a big gang member, and you could hate black people, but if Snoop Dogg comes out with a record, you're still going to buy it. When Ice Cube comes out with a record, you're still going to buy it. Even more poignantly and violently stated by Tupac Shakur in his song To Live and Die in L.A., he raps, Black love, brown pride, we might fight against each other, but I promise you this, we'll burn this city down, just get us pissed. Both rappers are keenly aware of the tension and solidarity between the two groups. If rap lyrics, rap music videos, and hip-hop films at times create and display structures and moments of what Philomena Essid might call everyday racism, this media also creates structures and moments of everyday solidarity, which involve cooperation, understanding, and empathy. When Latinos and African Americans confront similar issues and struggles, their combined rhetoric encourages important moments of understanding and union. This interplay between rhetoric that illustrates togetherness and rhetoric that illustrates differences and tension develops this notion of tenuous solidarity. So I want to begin uh, by talking about solidarity between the two groups, um, and I shortened the paper for this uh, video, and so I'm going to focus specifically on um, what I call the ethos of struggle and the metaphor of soldier, which is prevalent um, in hip-hop. So, to connect themselves with the notion of struggle, both Latinos and African Americans um, in hip hop continually incorporate the rhetorical metaphor of soldier in their lyrics, which is indicative of and perpetuates a soldier ethos. As with soldiers in a traditional army, many rappers and individuals that identify with the hip hop ethos identify with a notion of meaningful struggle, struggle that is both for survival and purpose. While the image of the soldier can conjure up a plethora of characteristics from institutional and social hegemony to unquestioned obedience, I believe hip-hop rhetoric connects with soldier imagery because of the characteristics of strength, struggle, and survival in the face of adversity. Often coming from poor and violent neighborhoods, the creators of rap music and many in their audience are keenly aware of struggle struggle to survive physically, emotionally, and rhetorically in a world that continually subjugates the poor, often minorities, and subjects them to oppressive circumstances. But it is important to highlight that the soldier metaphor, uh, one of the reigning metaphors in rap music and hip-hop culture, is a rhetorically powerful tool of identity and agency, not a metaphor of the weak. This seems indicative of much of hip-hop culture's worldview, an acceptance of the fact that there is struggle, that there is the presence of oppressive social forces, but that something can be done to combat those forces as soldiers confront their enemies on the battlefield. It is no wonder that both Latinos and African Americans connect with the metaphor of purposeful struggle come to life in the soldier imagery. The two groups are continually at the bottom of U.S. economic and educational achievement indicators and in many instances share a distinction as second-class citizens who have been born into the bottom ranks of the social and economic order. Struggle for many members of these two groups comes not only in the economic and educational spheres, but also in politics, healthcare, technology, linguistics, etc. The group also 
Uh, the groups also account for the highest incarceration rates in the United States. These conditions explain why struggle is a central theme in these communities and in their production of hip-hop rhetoric, a production that highlights, perpetuates, and creates an ethos of struggle. Two uh, quick quotes from Tupac. One of them comes from his song, Soldier Story, where he raps, they cutting off welfare, they think crime is rising now. You got whites killing blacks, cops killing blacks, and blacks killing blacks. Shit just gonna get worse. They just gonna become soldiers, straight soldiers. And in his song, Return of the Soldier, he raps, before I let you take me, I told you, F being trapped, I'm a soldier. While there are many more examples of soldier imagery um, in African-American hip hop, uh, Latino hip hop also provides examples of the soldier imagery and which I think uh, creates a solidarity between the two groups. Um, Latino rap artist Cypress Hill in their song Worldwide asked listeners to remember me now Cypress Hill soldier and in their song Tu no aguanta or you can't handle they rap listo preparado como un soldado ready prepared like a soldier. On their official website the group calls their latest tour biography soldier stories. And in the song, You Don't Want to F With Us, by Latino rapper Silencer, he refers to himself as the one-of-a-kind soldado. Houston, South Park, Mexican, in the song, Who's Over There, states, Soldier, I sleep with one eye open. And in referring to his rap label, calls himself a dope house soldier. A couple more examples, um, another one from South Park, Mexican, in the song, Illegal Amigos, writes, You always have my back, my number one soldado. And interestingly, in the song called I Want to Know Her Name, he raps, I swam across the bayou, a mojado, a soldado. These references point to the complex nuances present in the hip hop soldier ethos, reflecting individual struggle, at times clique struggle, and racial and cultural struggle. The pervasiveness uh, or the pervasive presence of soldier imagery by many African-American and Latino rap artists speaks volumes to the presence of poor and black brown angst in the United States. This ang angst directly connected to struggle is directed at other races and cultures, the educational system, police departments, the economic system, and the perceived white controlled social system, which are set up as direct causes of struggle among, among many within these two groups. The reality brought forth here is the presence of a strong psychological connection between African American and Latino hip hop artists and many in their audience um, of the soldier ethos. Okay, now I want to get over to the tension side, the tension between the two groups. Uh, while there are strong points of solidarity among Latinos and African Americans um, in the general citizenry and in hip hop. Um, much of that illustrated in the struggle ethos, um, there is tension as well. Those optimistic about relations between Latinos and African Americans can point to rhetoric and action in hip hop that highlight solidarity, and that would, but that would only be half the story. Although rap music continually points to similar realities in the lives of Latinos and African Americans and a sense of together in struggle, there is no doubt an ongoing struggle between the two groups as well. It's important to put these tensions between the two groups within a historical context, for the tension between these two populations certainly did not begin with the emergence of rap music and hip hop culture. Rather, rap music and hip hop culture serve to illustrate and at times perpetuate these tensions. If I had more time, I would go into some of the historical tensions between the two groups. Um, but some of the recent tensions have involved discussions about illegal immigration, where some African Americans feel that, uh, that Latino immigrants, legal or illegal, are taking away jobs from um, some African Americans. Um, also back, I believe in 2005, uh, President Vicente Fox of Mexico made some statements um, saying that these immigrants are taking jobs that not even blacks would want. And that would, that understandably upset a lot of African Americans. Um, also, at the high school level, at a number of schools across the United States, there have been fights and small um, riots between African Americans and Latinos. That's not to say that's the norm, but it's definitely a reality. Beyond that, the most vivid example of contemporary tensions between the two populations is in gang and prison life, 
two significant influences on the hip-hop scene, especially the brand of hip-hop music labeled gangster rap. Racial tensions in gang life are evident in cities across the United States, most notably Los Angeles, Denver, Houston, Miami, Kansas City, Albuquerque, and Dallas, and spill into and out of racial tensions present in prisons across the country. Um, one example of this that um, is outside of the prison but is connected to, to gang life um, is a 2006 slain in Los Angeles of a black 14-year-old named Cheryl Green, which the U.S. Attorney's Office officially called ethnic cleansing and which is linked to a larger movement by some Hispanic gang members to claim or reclaim territories held by African-American gangs. Rap music is connected to much gang culture uh, at, in some instances um, in Los Angeles and across the United States. And this music continually emphasizes connections to a particular gang, hood, city, or region, and many times has direct or especially indirect, uh, a, a indirect racial component. So a couple of specific examples from hip hop. Uh, if we look at the 50 Cent music video just a little bit, um, 50 Cent employs visual rhetoric that illustrates the tension between African Americans and Latinos. Though the lyrics to the song have nothing to do with these tensions, the storyline of the video is indicative of the separation and ongoing feud between the two groups. In two different scenes, 50 Cent uses African American females to seduce and incapacitate two rich Latino characters, one by telling the Latino, uh, tying the Latino to the post of a bed, and the other by drugging. It is alluded to in the video that the rapper is robbing and probably killing the two Latino characters and taking over their money and space. Also, in the popular hip-hop film Next Friday, um, a comedy written by rap icon Ice Cube, African Americans and Latino Americans are